What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of the Tech once again. Today we're going to be checking out the performance benchmarks and settings options for none other than Outlast 2, and it's a bloodbath, so stick around. To get things started off, the test bench is going to be an i7-7700K, overclocked to 4.8 GHz, mated to an MSI Gaming M3Z270 motherboard, running 16 GB of DDR4, clocked at 2400 MHz from Kingston. The game is going to be running on an M.200 drive, or an M.2 drive, over SATA, which is the M.200 drive from Biostar, which is why I get that a little bit mixed up there. It's all going to be powered by a Thermaltake 850 watt bronze rated power supply, which you can see over here somewhere. And that's going to be the test bench essentially here. Hopping into the benchmark run itself, it's going to be in the chapter Genesis. In this chapter, you'll see that we get past a certain wreck Edge, wreckage that may happen and at that point you will want to go ahead and drop down a cliff and then right here you'll see a, when you see the moon to the right oh to the right and up to the right and up once you see that that's when you know that you can start the benchmark at this point you will go ahead and follow the path being careful not to hit any cacti as that will cause damage which will cause screen effects which will invalidate your benchmark run. You will hop over the fence and then pause to take a look at the moving windmill, look back down and then take a left look at the door on the shed to your left and then continue to walk forward. Once you've walked down the path a little bit further, you'll see that there's a light on in a shed or kind of an overhang and underneath that shed, there's a tarp covering some nasty gooiness. So you wanna walk through there and there'll be a post in the middle, walk around that post, you, you'll pretty much do a 180 at that point or a U-turn and then you'll take a right and you'll see a man standing as a silhouette who will run off. Continue to walk towards where he was and on the left side there will be a door that will shut. When that door shuts, your benchmark run is over. At this point it should be about 60 seconds long. So for all of the benchmark tests as far as the GPUs goes, we tested all of the GPUs at 1080p with uh, pretty much maxed out settings except for filtering, which we left at by eight instead of bumping it up to by 16. Now, to give you an idea of how these settings affect your frame rate, let's go ahead and hop into the percent change in FPS by setting. Starting out with geometry, you will see that we had a percent change of 15.29%, which is pretty massive. You're talking about really good gains, and this is the one that you're going to want to look at first if you're having frame rate issues. Next, we're going to take a look at texture filtering, which will gain you about 7.2% change in FPS with textures coming right behind that with a 5% change, effects at a 3% change, shadows at a 2% change, and anti-aliasing at a 1.66% change. They don't seem to make too much of an effect except for your textures, at least in this dark setting during the benchmark run from what I noticed. Shadows do play a pretty significant effect, but luckily they don't play enough of an effect on frame rate for you to need to change them. Alrighty, so all the goodness for you AMD and Nvidia fanboys to throw fists over here. It's going to be the benchmarks for Outlast 2. And as previously stated, all of these settings are pretty much maxed out except for the filtering, which is only by eight. Hopping right in here, you're gonna see that we have another win for Nvidia. This is like the fourth damn game in a row lately and it's kind of getting frustrating. And I think that it might have something to do with the fact that Nvidia is just performing better on day one releases. I have noticed some decent gains in FPS in some previous titles that I need to retest and show you guys. But as of today, and as of the release of Outlast 2, 
Here are the results. We have the GTX 1060 for the win coming in at top with a minimum FPS of 102, an average of 128.1, and a max of 155. While on the 1063 gigabyte, it still beats out the MSI RX 480 Gaming X Edition with a minimum of 95, an average of 115, and a max of 138. Fear not though, if you are on the red team, you can get plenty good numbers at 1080p on the RX 480 with a minimum FPS of 85, an average of 101.8, and a max of 119. The Sapphire RX 474 gigabyte performs admirably, keeping you well above 60 frames per second for a low, low cost with minimums of 74, an average of 89.23, and a max of 107. Of course, around the same price point uh, these days, you have the GTX 1050 Ti. The advantage to the 1050 Ti, of course, will be a lower, much lower power consumption than the RX 470. And it does keep you above 60 FPS with a minimum of 62, an average of 75.07, and a max of 91. The 1050, unfortunately, will see drops below 60 with min of 56, an average of 68.18, and a max of 85. Finally, wrapping things up, you have the RX 462 gigabyte with an average of 51.33, a min of 41, and a max of 64. Overall, it appears that Outlast 2 just performs well, no matter what, at 1080p. I had no issues bumping the resolution up to 1440p, and even playable at 4K on both the 1060s and the RX 480. If you're looking into buying a graphics card only and purely for Outlast 2, you're probably gonna to wanna to hop on the green team for now, at least until some optimizations are made for the red team. I do apologize for not having an RX 580 or RX 570 at this point, but the performance deltas are only within about 5%, so I do wanna point that out. And you probably notice that I'm not a huge YouTube channel, so I don't get all those cards for free, but I will be getting them and they will be rolled into all of these benchmarks in the near future. You can help me get there quicker by heading over to patreon.com slash sonofatech, where I do post all of my benchmark charts early for patrons only. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.